In this video, we're going to look at inspecting, manipulating, extracting, and exporting profiles in RAMP. To do this, we're going to use the example data set that we previously looked at, noting that it contains a number of different value fields and a series of offsets or cross profiles. So if we open the, excuse me, the profiling processor, you'll notice that the first method in here is called content report. So I can give that a particular uh, profile file and it will output <clears throat> general information about that file. What does it contain? What are the fields? Um, what's the minimum, maximum distance? That sort of thing. If I choose to specify the output file as being blank, it will write it to the process info. So this is a really quick way of having a peek into a profile file without necessarily having to load it into the profile viewer. Let's have a look at what that does. Okay, so it's told me that it has uh, a dist field, offset field, x, y, seabed, r1, r1, a, r2, r3, and r3 cap. And it's told me where it's gotten some of those uh, values from. It says there are 11, um, 1,194 points along the profile, starting at distance zero and terminating at distance uh, 15,541. So it looks like these distances are in meters, uh, not in, say, kilometers or any other units. Uh, it then talks about the minimum distance, maximum distance between profile points the median, mean distances, etc. So you get some statistics about how, how frequently points are distributed along the um, profile. It then concludes by telling me that it also appears that you have uh, the following offsets in your um, profile file. So that's the process info viewer. Of course, I can see most of this already in the profile viewer. So if I just go back there, again, I can see all of those fields. It also tells me uh, in the tooltip text where those fields uh, were derived from and it also shows me all the uh, offsets for example. So let's go look at a, another method in the profiling processor now for modifying or transforming values. Now uh, transform value field is a method that allows you to apply a pre-offset scale or post-offset to any of the fields in the profile. So that includes not only the value fields, but actually also the distance offset X and Y fields. So for example, that could be quite useful when we want to transform the distance units in this file, uh, in the file we looked at, the example file, they were in meters, but we might want to actually calculate those in kilometers. So let's have a look at how we might do that. I'll pick my uh, example profile. I'll choose the dist field. I'm not going to offset it. Um, pre or post, but I am going to scale it. So to convert, obviously, meters to kilometers, I need to divide by 0 0.001. Or, sorry, multiply by 0 0.001. So let's run that and then inspect the file again. Okay, transform's done. Let's go back to the content report and have a look at what it says now. Okay, you'll notice that the start distance is still zero, but the end distance is now 15.54. So we know that it's transformed the distances correctly. Let's have a quick look at some of the other methods. <clears throat> so uh, dropping value fields. So this allows me to remove a value field from a particular uh, profile data set. So let's open the example one and You'll notice it hasn't to, it hasn't removed dist offset x and y from the um, from the fields, but of course they are mandatory, so I don't want to delete those because I'll break my profile file. But let's remove the R three cap. Let's say we don't really want that one anymore. So let's choose that, remove R three cap, and OK. Let's go look at what that looks like in the profile viewer now, just to see. Um, just to, to prove that those uh, have, have worked. So this was the profile file before with the R3 cap in there and the distances appear to be all in meters. Let's open the file again now. And you'll notice that my distances have changed down here and they now appear to be in kilometers. So I'm going to tell it they're actually in kilometers now. 
and the R3 cap has been removed and is not shown in the listing anymore. Okay, let's go and have a look at the extract methods in the uh, profiling processor. So what extract does is it um, extracts certain elements from your profile. So I have, um, I have three options, extract cross profiles, extract offset profiles, and extract pivoted cross profiles to ASCII CSV. We'll come back to that one. But what extract cross profiles does is it allows me to select an input file and let's say, okay, we have distances now in kilometers. So let's say I want to extract all the cross profiles from zero to, let's do one kilometer. And I want to put them into with this output file name. Uh, let's call it extracted cross profiles dot csv and what this is going to do it's going to extract all the cross profile profiles between start distance 0 and the end distance which is 1 or 1 kilometer in the case of this example data set and it's going to create separate profile files for the, each of those and that now means that that profile file is in a pretty simple format um, that is very much like an ASCII CSV format. So I can open it up in uh, Excel, for example, or a spreadsheet editor and do something with it. Let's go ahead and extract the cross profiles. Okay, and let's have a look in a file manager what that's actually created. So it's created a series of these uh, cross profile files. You notice that there is CP0 here and it goes all the way up to CP0.999 because I asked it to go to uh, one kilometer <clears throat> and for each point in the profile or along the profile it's created a separate profile file so let's just go look at one of these for example and I'm going to open it in Excel and you'll see that it is in fact actually a profile file but um, what I can do is very simply delete that and now I might want to draw, for example, seabed and the R2 reflector. So let's uh, create a line graph for those. And there they are. For whatever reason, it hasn't drawn it right to the edge, but that's correct because it only goes out to uh, 11 records anyhow. So there you go. That's my uh, that's my a single step cross profile at distance 0 0.0260055 along my original profile file. So that's what happens uh, when I want to extract cross profiles. Now what happens when I want to extract an offset profile? So for example, uh, let's go back to our profile viewer for a second so we can discuss what's uh, really happening in here. So again, we talked about uh, in the previous uh, method extracting the cross profiles. So that went from zero right up to, to every profile right up to one kilometer. Um, and it extracted as I stepped through, sorry, stepping one kilometer, I don't mean to do that. Step at 0 0.001 kilometer. So it's stepping every meter. Actually, let's make that step every five meters. Go back to the beginning. So for every step, it's extracting these cross profiles for each step right out to the one kilometer mark. That's what that method did. But we have offset profiles in here. So I have a profile at offset minus 1000 and also up to plus 1000. What if I wanted to extract, let's say, the profile, let's make the 400, negative 400 profile active. I want to extract just that longitudinal profile. Let's see how we can do that. So back in the processor, I can choose the extract offset profiles method. Again, I'll pick my input 
I'll say I want to extract offset negative 400. Um, I can actually choose to um, specify um, others in here. So let's say um, extract negative 400 and 0. And start at distance 0 and end at distance 9999. Now we know that's a big number. The profile only goes up to a distance of about 15 kilometers. So this is more enough for more than enough for it to extract the entire longitudinal profile for offset 400 and 0. And let's give it uh, now the, these are extract offset dot CSV. OK, that's the root file name. And let's go ahead and run it. And let's look at what it's created in the file manager. So it's created these uh, two files here. Let's have a look at the minus 400 offset. And again, it has all the metadata fields in there, but essentially it's a CSV file. And this is a longitudinal profile. So let's plot all of these values here. Whoops. Before we need to do that, actually, we need to get rid of these null values. So let's find anything that is negative 9999.99 and replace it simply with a space. Uh, let's just go replace all. OK. This is now better for me to be able to plot all of this. And there we go. There's my single longitudinal profile, the minus 400 offset extracted from my original profile file. Let's look now at some of the uh, export. Oh, sorry, we've got one more extract to do, and that is to extract pivoted cross profiles. What does this mean? Well, the best way to explain it is to show you. <laughs> so um, if you remember uh, the structure of a normal profile file, let's go and have a quick look at one. Here's my normal profile file, and if you remember, it contains uh, the distance and offset combination. So this is at distance zero along the profile, and here's all the offsets. So it's very difficult for me to be able to draw all of the cross profiles in a single line, because they're actually spread across multiple lines. So pivoting, what that does is it pivots the files so that uh, you still have a distance offset, blah, 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 in the value fields. Um, but now uh, the offsets are also presented as separate columns in the output ASCII CSV file. Let's go and have a look at what that does when we apply it to this particular uh, data set. So let's choose that. It's asking me for a field name. So I need to be able to choose. So I want to pivot um, the, the file based on the seabed. Yep. So seabed is my value. Start at 0, end at 999, and output an ASCII CSV file. So we'll call this uh, pivoted.csv. And it's the pivot of, of the uh, seabed. So Let's run it and let's have a look. OK, so I still have a distance along the profile, um, but and I still have the uh, central X and Y position. So that's the central position uh, along offset 0. But now I also have fields that have been added or columns that have been added for each of my offsets. And the value presented here is now actually the value for um, the seabed. So if I plot a row, that actually is the cross profile at distance 0. Uh, if I was to move this down here, now we're looking at the cross profile at distance 0 0.247 kilometers. So that's what pivoting does. The limitation is I can obviously only pivot one against one of the value fields in the original profile. 
let's go and have a look at some of the exporting methods in the processor. So you'll notice there are a whole series of um, export options or export options in the processing methods for profiles and often they are very simple <clears throat> and commonly used uh, profiling formats. So we have the IVA 5 point file that's commonly used for pipelines where it presents the top of the pipe and some points either side of the pipeline that uh, represent the level seabed. Um, this is a ASCII CSV version of a five point file. Um, we can also export VisualWorks uh, cell, cell line files and cross profiles, uh, Keras HIPS cross profiles, QPS cross profiles. So these are all industry uh, software um, formats that uh, are often used for profiling the GeoConsult cross profile format. And I can also choose to export <clears throat> to more generic formats like uh, an Esri shapefile or an AutoCAD DXF file. In the case of uh, a shapefile, um, it will create um, both a, a polyline data set and a point data set. So the polyline data set, um, unfortunately, is only um, two dimensional, uh, but it contains the distance and offset values um, as attributes for the uh, polylines in that file. The profile points are, in addition, are attributed with the actual um, values from the value fields. So that's what happens when you export to a shape file. And also I can export to a, um, an AutoCAD DXF file. So if I want to open this in, in, a, in a CAD program. Let's actually um, do that now. Let's uh, choose our example profile. Uh, and let's uh, say do longitudinal profiles. Yes, do cross profiles. Yes. So this is going to export lines in my AutoCAD DXF file that have the longitudinal profiles as well as the cross profiles drawn as lines. And let's output them. So let's go here to DXF file. So we're going to say, um, we're going to call it my profile, my profile.dxf and run. It's saving the DXF file. Now let's have a look at what that looks like in a CAD program. So there it is. Let's open it up. Okay, here's that uh, data in a CAD package. Uh, you can see that it is uh, three-dimensional um, and each of the value fields has uh, come up as a separate layer. So I can, for example, let's, uh, let's turn off everything and just turn on, here's the seabed. And you can see the uh, sort of the three dimensionality there. Let's turn on the cross profiles for the seabed. This is where I have a lot more data coming in now. That's yeah, probably a bit too much data. But uh, there it is, nonetheless, all of the data exported to a DXF file so that you can do something with it in a, a CAD package. So this has been a quick look at uh, inspecting, manipulating, extracting and exporting profiles in RAMP. I hope the video has been useful for you. Um, thanks for watching.